And so this thing came from like beyond our solar system and it's just yeah. passing through. It's only the third time we've ever seen something like that. Is that so why it's called 3i? Yeah, because Look it's 3i. Something enormous has entered our solar system. And I don't say that lightly. It began on September 12, 2025. A flare appeared in the ultraviolet spectrum, a pulse so bright it looked like a second sun flickering at the edge of the solar frontier. At first, NASA's SOHO Observatory flagged it as a data error, just another cosmic glitch. But when an amateur astronomer in Australia confirmed it with his telescope, disbelief gave way to awe. He saw a glowing body with a tail stretching wider than five full moons. It wasn't a reflection. It wasn't dust. It was radiant, alive with light of its own. They named it C2025R2, Swan. At first, scientists thought it was a comet, a frozen traveler from deep space, harmless and beautiful. But the data began to rebel. Its reflectivity was off the charts, brighter than anything natural. It didn't shimmer like ice or burn like rock. It shone as if it were made of its own light. Swan R2 wasn't reflecting the sun it was emitting, and that made no sense. And it didn't come alone, because just months earlier, another interstellar visitor had entered the solar system, 3I Atlas. The odds of two interstellar objects arriving within months of each other are practically impossible. One could be coincidence. Two is choreography. Their orbits were mirror images across the solar plane, both converging on the sun from opposite directions. The distance between their closest points was barely 50 million kilometers, cosmically, a thread's width. Two arrivals, two paths, one destination. When scientists overlaid their trajectories, the pattern was too elegant to ignore. Some called it chance. Others whispered something else, coordination. If Atlas was the scout, Swan R2 might be the arrival. And the more data we gathered, the stranger it became. Swan R2 didn't behave like a comet. Its surface wasn't made of dust or frozen gas, but of metals, nickel, cobalt, and ionized carbon. Its outer layer glowed with a silvery blue plasma, as if electricity itself was sliding across a surface. It wasn't just bright, it was self-luminous, generating its own field of light. Most comets shed material when solar wind hits them, forming a tail that streams away from the sun. But Swan R2 did the opposite. The solar wind bent around it, forming a magnetic void, a bubble so strong that charged particles curved away as if deflected by an invisible shield. To do that would require an energy output greater than every power plant on Earth combined. That's not sublimation. That's engineering. Then came the orbit. Every interstellar object ever observed, Taumuamua Borisov Atlas enters and leaves on an open hyperbolic path, never to return. But Swan R2 is different. Its orbit is closed, elliptical, bound to the sun. The simulations froze the room into silence. It wasn't escaping, it was staying. The period of its orbit was calculated down to the decimal, 22,554 years, not approximate. Exact. That kind of stability cannot exist naturally. Over tens of thousands of years, gravity, solar tides, and planetary drift distort every orbit. But Swan R2's path doesn't decay. It's perfect. Self-correcting. As if some invisible hand occasionally adjusts its course. And that number, 22,554, kept reappearing. In its light patterns, in its emissions, even in faint radio data. On October 2, 2025, deep space antennas detected something new, a repeating pulse. 22 distinct peaks recurring every 1.2 seconds. The same structure appeared again in Earth, magnetosphere, and again in radio signals echoing through the heliosphere. 22 pulses every cycle, precise, rhythmic, intentional. When translated into binary, the pattern encoded ratios matching Swan R2's orbit, its period, inclination and eccentricity, as if the object was describing itself, a cosmic self-portrait written in electromagnetic language. At first, scientists thought it was an error, some kind of interference, but the same pulse appeared across independent instruments worldwide. Every analysis led to the same conclusion, the signal wasn't random, it was structured, 
It repeated too perfectly to be natural. And then, just before disappearing behind the sun, another event occurred. A single electromagnetic burst lasting exactly 22 seconds. It came from the direction of the sun but wasn't solar in origin. The waveform was symmetrical, harmonic and mathematical. 22 peaks once again. Coincidence was collapsing under the weight of repetition. Now both 3i Atlas and Swan R2 are hidden behind the sun, a cosmic blackout known as Solar Conjunction. For the next several weeks, no telescope on Earth can see them. And yet, even in their absence, the effects continue. Magnetometers across the world show synchronous oscillations. Space antennas still detect the faint echoes of the 22-second pulse bouncing through the solar wind. Even the cosmic background radiation shows a slight modulation at the same frequency. NASA, ESA, and JAXA have all confirmed the anomaly, but none have made a public statement. Some data streams were delayed, others classified. It feels less like uncertainty and more like containment. So, what's happening behind that blinding curtain of plasma? Some theorize Swan R2 is charging, absorbing solar plasma before executing a maneuver. Others believe the pulse is a synchronization signal between two bodies preparing to act together. The scout and the fortress. The question is whether this is coincidence, coordination, or contact. Because if Swan R2 truly orbits the Sun every 22,554 years, then the last time it passed this way was at the end of the last ice age, when glaciers still stretched across the continents and humans were just learning to build fire, look up, and wonder. Maybe ancient eyes once saw it, a blazing light crossing the sky brighter than the moon, visible even by day. Maybe they carved it into stone. Maybe they called it a god. And now, thousands of years later, it's back. Some researchers see patterns in ancient myths, gods who descended from the heavens and promised to return, fiery ships in the sky, celestial teachers who brought knowledge. Maybe those stories weren't myths at all. Maybe they were memories written by people who saw something we are now seeing again. Swan R2 challenges everything we think we know. It deflects plasma. It shines with impossible luminosity. Its orbit is too precise, its energy too high, its signals too perfect. We've measured its pulse, its timing, its frequency. 22 everywhere we look, 22 pulses, 22 harmonics, 22,000 years. The universe is counting in twos and elevens, whispering through mathematics. And the deeper we look, the stranger it gets. Those pulses aren't just light. They interact with Earth's own magnetic field inducing tiny, synchronized ripples in the atmosphere. It's as if the object is tuning the solar system to its rhythm, resonating through plasma and field alike. Some call it coincidence, some call it communication, others call it a countdown. If Atlas was the warning, then Swan R2 may be the response. Because for the first time in history, Two interstellar objects, both active, both emitting, both possibly engineered, are together behind the sun. Unseen, unheard, acting in silence. And maybe, just maybe, that silence is an absence. Maybe it's strategy. We don't know what will emerge when the glare fades. It could be nothing, two lifeless relics of cosmic chance. Or it could be the first true evidence that we are not alone, that something ancient, deliberate, and unimaginably advanced has been passing through our system long before we ever learned to look up. If that 22,554-year cycle is real, then we've entered the next chapter of a story older than civilization. The last time this object passed, humanity was primitive. This time, we're watching, we're recording, and perhaps we're being watched in return. Because if 3i Atlas was the whisper, Swan R2 is the echo, a mirror answering across time. Two visitors, two messages, one purpose. Maybe they are observers. Maybe they are messengers. Maybe they are reminders. Whatever they are, the universe is speaking again. And sometimes when the cosmos falls silent, it isn't resting. It's waiting. So keep your eyes on the sky. Because when the sun's glare finally fades, and those objects reappear, 
What we see next might change everything we thought we knew about who's been here and how long they've been watching. 